Hey guys, Larry the Tractor Guy. Man, it is super windy out here in Southwest Oklahoma today. Um, we've got a call from a customer that's got a 9430 tractor. And we just pulled up here. And basically, he has uh, communicated that the tractor just completely died right here where it sits and will not start. And uh, so we're going to get out and check that out and see what's up with this uh, 9430 that will not start. Kind of raise the hood up here and just kind of look things over real quick and uh, kind of get an idea of maybe what's going on here with this 9430 that will not start. One thing that I see that I'm a little bit uh, concerned with is that it looks like we have a lot of coolant leakage around the exhaust cooler and then all over the side of the engine here and so I'm a little concerned with that but we're gonna go ahead and check and see if this engine will start and verify this engine will not start turn the key on there well first thing it looks like is that we've got a dead completely dead battery on this tractor so i come over here and took a look real quick at the batteries on this tractor on this 9430 and it looks like maybe i don't know the customer never said but it looks like somebody has disconnected the batteries so we're going to connect the batteries back up and see if we can diagnose his uh, starting problem. We got the batteries connected back up on this 9430. Gonna see if we can crank it over here. Looks like it started just fine. Fan code, ECU code. Talking about 157, ECU code of 157.01. Okay, that's gonna be a fuel pressure code. So we're gonna go ahead and shut this off since it's saying stop there. And go ahead and check this out real quick. So I'm outside of the tractor now. And as soon as I exited the tractor, I could hear this low pressure fuel pump running with the key turned off. And there, if you can hear that, it just came on again on its own. The key, remember the key is not on now and the engine is not running, obviously. So, and our fuel pump continues to come on on its own. I'm pretty confident that what we got going on here is we probably have a low pressure fuel pump failure. Um, the electronic portion of this fuel pump has probably shorted out and or failed causing that low pressure pump to come on and off on its own okay if you can hear that this would be your low pressure fuel pump right on top of the uh, fuel filter housing here and looks like it's the original pump so it's never been replaced before okay so we're gonna look at this 157 code real quick and verify that that is a fuel pressure code pulled that up in service advisor and that 15701 code that we were getting um basically says that the high pressure fuel signal is extremely low okay and it gives us some diagnostic procedures to go by here um but i suspect that our low pressure fuel pump that supplies fuel over to our high pressure fuel pump is actually our problem and the reason that i think that that could be probably our problem is because the low pressure fuel pump um, continues to run on and off turn on and off and on and off continuously with the key turned off and the machine not running and so i'm pretty sure now i know why the customer disconnected the batteries um, because he probably realized that um, heard that fuel pump coming on on its own and uh, went ahead and disconnected those batteries so we didn't we, we didn't uh, uh, run his batteries down so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get a low pressure fuel pump and then we'll uh, investigate this coolant leak on the side of the engine 
and uh, we'll, we'll come back to this on a later date. Hey guys, so we got our low pressure fuel pump in that we ordered for the 9430 and we're about to install that. We went ahead and unplugged the low pressure fuel pump rather than disconnecting the batteries. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and change this pump. Uh, but keep in mind, this is the low pressure fuel pump and we had a high pressure uh, fuel code. So what's happening here is this low pressure fuel pump supplies fuel over to our high pressure pump here on the back of the cylinder head. And um, so if you're getting high pressure fuel codes, it's not always because of a high pressure fuel problem. Uh, keep in mind that you do have this low pressure fuel pump that's supplying that high pressure fuel pump with fuel. So all we have to do is remove these three little cap screws here and uh, the low pressure fuel pump does sit right on top of the fuel filter housing here and pulls fuel, draws fuel basically from the fuel tank um, over to the low pressure fuel pump and then in turn directs that fuel and primes the high pressure pump with i believe it's like somewhere around two to two and a half psi of pressure over to our high pressure pump okay and keep in mind that this low pressure fuel pump also works off of a duty cycle okay and so it only works as hard as it has to to maintain a good low pressure fuel flow over to our high pressure pump. Okay. Um, sometimes this can be a little hard to get out of here. Um, and it's really a little bit difficult to plug the low pressure pump back in because the connector is pretty tight there, but go ahead and pull that out of there. So there is our low pressure fuel pump and i don't know if you can see through that little hole there but there is a electronic circuit board and a small tiny uh, processor or controller inside of this top of this um, low pressure fuel pump there's our new pump i'm going to go and put a little bit of lubricant on these o-rings okay so that the pump fits in there and slides up in the housing uh nice and easy we're gonna put our pump in and when we go in we'll have to turn that to direct our plug over to the wiring harness here Makes it a little difficult because it's such a tight fit where that connector plugs into the low pressure fuel pump. Okay, it doesn't take very much torque on those little cap screws, just snug them up. Okay, now we've got to get our pump plugged in if you notice real quick i did have to remove the alternator so i've kind of got it uh well I'll say i did i kind of had it hanging up here with a little zip tie there um but i didn't even take the wiring loose from the alternator i just kind of hung it out of the way there um so that i could go ahead and change my low pressure fuel pump so we'll go ahead and put the alternator back on and hook the belt back up here turn the key on and uh, make sure that our fuel primes up like it's supposed to and then we'll go ahead and run the tractor uh, make sure that everything runs like it like it's supposed to we did verify that the pump does not run any longer with the key off only with the key in the on position so we went ahead and started the tractor and what i like to do is i went ahead and made a live service advisor connection here and so I pulled up some readings under the readings tab here. And I don't know if you can see, but we're looking at, I like to check this. So we're looking at the high pressure fuel, the actual there. 
and it should be around 90 psi at idling which it is and then it we've got a a reading here of our low fuel pressure our actual is showing about 33 psi and our our desired is 2.2 psi okay and our duty cycle here that i talked about earlier is at 20 percent okay and so you'll see that duty cycle go up under a load and also you'll notice that under a load under these readings that you'll notice this this low pressure fuel desired can change okay but what it's trying to do is meet the demand of the high pressure fuel pump and so there's a couple things about that that i've seen in the past a couple of tips that might help you out along the way fuel filters can obviously cause um, your low pressure fuel pump to struggle uh, to keep up with your high pressure demand and then also i found a few times um, that uh, debris in the fuel tank can also cause a restriction enough to actually lose that low pressure fuel and not be able to meet that demand of the high pressure fuel pump so keep that in mind um, if you're having any kind of fuel issues like that and uh, in this situation what we had was we had a failure of the low pressure fuel pump that was causing the engine not to or causing the high pressure fuel pump to not have enough fuel supplied to it by the low pressure pump so what low pressure pump wasn't meeting that demand to the high pressure fuel pump and in turn the engine would die in the field and uh, then also we noticed that when you turn the key off that the low pressure fuel pump would continue to try to run periodically and run the batteries down so uh, replacing that low pressure fuel pump solved his issue here and uh, so we're going to return this tractor back to the field back to the customer uh, larry the tractor guy signing out Hey guys, check out Larry the Tractor Guy videos here, other videos here, subscribe here, and buy all your John Deere parts here. We'll make it work. I think you're gonna have to make it. We'll make it work. Come on, let's go. <laughs> we need to make you need some bloopers. Y'all already, already burned me out. Y'all already burned me out. He's sitting in the sun over here, man.